Welcome to Shine Chats. The idea of empowerment plays a vital role in the context of dental hygiene in the clinical settings. To me, to be empowered at work is when I'm given the space and resources needed to excel. As a hygienist, this can be enough appointment time to properly educate my patients and provide exceptional care. Karina, I'd love to hear your thoughts on empowerment. Thank you so much. So I think that it is very important in the dental space, especially as hygienists and especially new ones coming out of school or some that have been in the space for a while to not only just seek to improve themselves as hygienists, whether that's improving themselves for their patients or for their practice, their doctors, improving their skill, but allowing that to also expand outside of the field, which Kelsey, I think is awesome because you are like a prime example of that. You're not just clinical now, but you are expanding your knowledge and learning. And then there are so many of us that can learn from you and your experiences. And I think that as a hygienist myself, it's super important because if I stay strong and I know what I know from hygiene school, then I am able to share that with my patients and they can see my enthusiasm and have more faith and more confidence in me. I definitely agree with that. Um, us being confident in ourselves and the knowledge that we have gained, not just in our education, but also meeting with each of our patients and just learning from our team members, whether that's the doctor, our assistants, yeah. our managers, it really course, goes yeah. into that exceptional patient care overall. It's so nice to connect with a fellow hygienist on this topic. <laughs> so let's dive into a few more questions. Um, what are some of the private uh, primary challenges you encounter as a hygienist in the clinical setting? In the clinical setting, honestly, I would say, I mean, of course, time management is just one of the hardest things. But when we're actually talking about like myself as a hygienist, it's just making sure that I am staying, I would say, up to date with everything that is changing this day and age. So that's where it's just important to, you know, continue with courses and different things like that because dentistry is just changing every day. There's new and better ways to do everything. So if we can constantly just stay educated. Then we can come forth, bring that to our doctors and be like, hey, I learned something new. I think this is great. We should maybe implement this or this is how we can streamline some processes and just different things like that where once again, it's all about just providing the best care that we can for our patients, but feeling confident enough to do that and to have a say, to know that I can provide better care if I have X, Y, Z, and then being able to come forth and just feeling educated and, um, and strong enough to, you know, bring it up to the right person and to kind of just know how to facilitate that I think is, um, is truly, I would say one of the more difficult challenges is, you know, no hygienist wants to come up to their doctor and be like, um, I need this or I need that or that. like of we course. try to just sit behind, you know, and just let everything happen. But sometimes there are things that can make our jobs better. No, of course. And I think that that's those skills that you learn outside of school and you just learn from connecting and empowering each yeah. other and, and having that open dialogue. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And having open dialogue, like you said, with your doctor, with your right. hygienist with your team members. And I always made the joke, I don't know if you did, when I graduated hygiene school, I said, by the time I retire, it's probably gonna be all different. <laughs> Streamlining into like advocacy and how we talk yeah. about connecting with everyone. It often involves speaking up for patients' needs. How do you advocate for your patients' oral health concerns within the dental team and beyond? Yeah, so I like primarily right when I was out of school, um, I joined a practice and we were huge on multiple levels of acknowledgement of care that was needed. And so that would all just start, patient comes back, sits into my chair, you know, and then you go through med medical history, everything, like I don't have to go through it all. However, once the patient, then it was time for the doctor to come on in. But by the time that patient is there, I've already acknowledged the fact, okay, they've got sensitive teeth because they have recession. So maybe we can do X, Y, Z to help my patient. And the patient maybe doesn't understand or doesn't really know. I do my best to educate. So then by the time doctor comes in the room, hey, doc, I just want to let you know, Susie here is very sensitive to, you know, cold temperatures. When we were doing her cleaning, I could definitely tell. I mean, I wasn't able to use the Cavitron. And just mm -hmm. constantly reaffirming so that the patient also knows that you acknowledge the pain that's going on in their mouth. But that with that knowledge, you're sharing that. And now you're going to come up with a plan to fix it. 
Same mm-hmm. thing goes though for my patients who are a scaling, but it's like, are they a scaling? Are they just localized? Hmm, what do we do? Once again, having that conversation with a patient who maybe just doesn't understand what the treatment is that they need. And then also insurance, battling insurance is crazy to get certain things covered, but it's yes. once again, it's just talking to the office manager. Let me know what you need from insurance and I will write out a narrative for that patient. Here are the x-rays, detailed notes, and just knowing how to do that really helps me feel confident enough that I can provide a treatment plan for my patient in the hygiene chair, that I can help doctor put together a treatment plan for the patient and then present that to the front desk because we have everything that we need so that this Mm -hmm. patient gets everything that they need. Even if they're overwhelmed, I always tell them, I'm like, you know what? First appointments or this is a big treatment plan, but what we're going to do, we're going to section it out for you. We're going to do one thing at a time. Don't be overwhelmed. Take this home, sit on it. But for now, we are just going to at least schedule one appointment and handle it out. that. And then we just tackle one thing at a time. And that also not only empowers us as hygienists to have that confidence because we're not also overwhelmed ourselves, but it makes that patient also feel empowered to like, number one, they have a choice. Always. They have a choice, but they have the knowledge to know which choice to make. I love that. Yeah. And then just kind of summing everything up, like what advice would you give to fellow hygienists um, that are experiencing, you know, needing to advocate for themselves and their patients? And then how does that experience extend beyond the clinical settings? I know that you've done some great things yeah. with your time <laughs> yeah. and being able to spread good knowledge and information. So I'd love to hear about that. Yeah, so I would say in the clinical setting, a lot of it, join dental hygiene boards and just kind of bounce ideas off of each other. If there is a hygienist that you know that maybe has been in the field longer or different things like that, to be able to talk to them, find somebody in the field who can provide you good knowledge that you can hopefully be able to come up with a better plan, whether that's, you know, oh, we need sharper instruments. So do we need new instruments do, or can our instruments be retipped? Do we need a sharpening protocol? What is it? And then how do we properly present that to the doctor that it's not just me, 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 but you're actually presenting it in a way to show the benefit of the practice and the benefit of the patient and how it will help us in our futures. Because we all know in dentistry, we're all going to be hunched over like this one day, you know, crinkled around. (laughs) We want to have long fulfilled careers that we're not in pain. So it's truly just encompassing that goal and then finding good ways to present different options to what you need as a hygienist. And that can also, because we don't always want to be hunched over forever, doing clinical forever. There's so many different ways that we can expand our knowledge and our skill and just ourselves as hygienists outside of being clinical. Myself, I do two to three days a week and then I'm able to work with amazing companies like Henry Shine and come on and talk (laughs) about awesome ways that number one, we can be empowered as hygienists, but with different companies talking about how to grow outside of the field, maybe start speaking at conferences and getting in touch with different brands. How can you grow yourself in a different way. And I think that there's just a lot of places that you can go to, to do that, but most of it really just requires conversation. So. Yes, I totally agree with that. And um, again, sticking on the, the theme of empowerment and advocating for yourself, just not being afraid to have those conversations on what are my opportunities? What can I learn? Where can I grow? Never Um, be afraid is 100%. I think, I think the best thing, just if you see something that you want, you see a goal, put something in front of you that is wild that you're, I would never be able to do that. Perfect. Put that in front of you. Now, what do you need to do to get there? Don't just make that right off the bat starting, you know, Oh, I'm shy. And then picking a company. No, find different little ways that you can all of a sudden make your way to get to that beautiful, that wonderful prize, that wonderful goal that you've set for yourself, I think is, is, is huge. That's so well said, Karina. Thank you so much. And this is so great. I'm confident that your efforts are on making a difference in your lives and patients are effective and you're going to do great things. And thank, thank you again you. for joining us on Shine Chats. Of course. Thanks for having me. <laughs>